Hi, I'm Jack Barnes, President and CEO of People's United Bank. I'm here on Audubon Street in New Haven, a vibrant cultural center. People's United Bank is proud to support the communities where we live and work. That's why we're supporting CPTV and the many Connecticut cultural treasures they will be featuring over the coming months. Look for stories each week featuring a cultural treasure in your neighborhood. Perched high atop a cliff in East Haddam, overlooking the Connecticut River, sits Gillette Castle. Medieval fortress on the outside, a rustic hunting lodge within. Designed by the eccentric stage actor William Gillette, one of the most famous actors of his time in turn-of-the-century America. He was known for being very tall and handsome and gaunt. He was a real heartthrob. He was the guy that gave us the image of what Sherlock Holmes looks like. Gillette was a stage actor who created the modern day image of the world's most famous detective. But it's his architectural masterpiece that leaves the most lasting impression. It's local field stone and hand carved white oak throughout. It's all steel framed, but he covered all of the beams and pillars with wooden planks and with the stone facade um, to a certain point to make it look like a big theater set. Construction started in 1914, taking five years to complete. This house probably cost him about a million dollars to build. That translates into about $15 million today. There was a reserve tank. Equipped with all the modern features of the time. Electricity. These light switches are designed to look like a toggle switch on the railroad, because he loved his railroad. And each bedroom had its own bathroom. I imagine he probably had the only flush toilets around here for a couple of years at least. The castle, full of other quirks, Gillette designed himself. He made his table roll so that he doesn't have to scuff up floors. There's 47 doors, and each one's completely different. They're all hand carved out of oak. This one's probably one of the most complex from just the number of pieces of operation. This door actually was fashioned after Colt Manufacturing, Samuel Colt. Gun handle here, barrel here. The decor, an eclectic collection of Gillette's favorite things. Top of the line Tiffany light fixtures, but wallpaper from the local department store. Tea sets and trinkets from around the world, alongside ceramic tchotchkes of his cherished cats. Legend has it Gillette kept 17 as pets. I talked to a woman last year who said that when she was a little girl around here, she'd ride her bike up the hill and Gillette would let her play with the cats and give her candy. Famous guests visited here as well. Of course, we've had a few presidents. Coolidge was here. Albert Einstein had a summer cabin nearby and he visited. Helen Hayes, Billy Burke, Glinda the Good Witch and the Wizard of Oz. Most likely all subjected to his practical jokes. He rigged up his liquor cabinet with a lock so that if he closed it, and pulled out a little pin at the top corner, the bar would lock. The bar trick, vintage Gillette, and no friend was spared. Rumor has it even Albert Einstein couldn't figure this out. And as his friends struggled down here, Gillette would be quietly watching on the second floor from a secret mirror just outside his bedroom. He had fun with this sort of thing. Gillette just had fun. I wanted to speak to you about something. It was awfully nice of you to come and see my locomotive. He designed a train that wended its way through his 100-acre property. He rode motorcycles like this one well into his 70s. He always tried to be a little ahead of the trend. Welcome to the third floor. This is the art gallery. He collected seascapes and landscapes. We also have on display a lot of his letters and correspondence, and he starts off by saying, there are several kinds of coffee, which I choose according to the weather and how I have slept the night before. Perhaps early tragedies inspired William Gillette to live life to the fullest. His brother Robert died in the Civil War. A sister died as a baby, and he lost his wife Helen after only six years of marriage when she suffered a ruptured appendix. Gillette never had children, but he worshipped his niece Margaret, who had her own bedroom at the castle. In fact, he left the property to her. 
He wrote in his will that he didn't want to see the house in the hands of some blithering saphead who has no conception of where he is. I think he would be pleased to see that people can still see it and appreciate it and that the grounds are still relatively as they were. I want to have you take a little trip with me, if you will, and uh, we'll go along over the place and uh, the weather's pretty good and maybe we'll enjoy ourselves. Funding for Connecticut's cultural treasures is provided by CPTV, Connecticut Tourism, the State Historic Preservation Office, Melinda and Paul Sullivan, and People's United Bank, what know-how can do.